to Conversations on the Path. This is Jackie, and I'm here today with Path of Love leader Rupta. And today we are going to talk about self-leadership. Hello, Rupta. Hello, Jackie. <laughs> it's so good to be here with you. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't we start out would you tell us a little bit about how you got into this work of inner leadership? I mean, I got into sort of personal development work through a teacher called Osho that probably various people have heard about over the years. And, mm -hmm. and definitely there's a few of us involved in, um, have known Osho's work that are part of the path of love. Um, and his work is a lot on, teaching meditation and uh, bringing awareness to what is and you know, working on our inner growth and of course he had a radical approach in the 70s but there was something in how he brought um sort of our awareness to our you know shadow side and our as well as our you know way of being that really taught me many things in um, <laughs> being human here today. So it was a big, it was a big uh, backdrop to what I was raised in, and it, it certainly has influenced how I work with individuals and also with myself. You know, as I've of course continue in this work and learn many different things over the years. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you were one of the lucky ones that got to be with Osho in person. <laughs> yeah, I was one of the kids growing up. Yeah, and it was a wild experience. It was just a wonderful. Uh, I didn't know how unique it was at the time. I didn't know what was. Um, I, it was just normal because I was raised in a commune, a spiritual conscious community, and. Um, when I was, I think I only realized when I was in my mid twenties, wow, that was a really unique experience because the majority of the people I was in encountering, um, uh, after Osho left his body and I sort of entered into the world again, I, I realized I had a very unconventional upbringing <laughs> and it was, um, and yet I, of course, I'm grateful for the experiences because it was unlike anything I've, you know, had, you know, in my life. Yes, totally fantastic. I remember when my very first introduction to personal growth work at all was that I had received a gift one holiday of an Osho book that he had written. And I had never done any personal growth work before that. And it was, I think, totally by accident that I got the book because the person told me they found it on a rack with a group of others and thought it looked like something I'd enjoy. And from the very first sentence, I read one sentence and it was like something inside me just totally opened. And then after that, I couldn't, I could not get enough. I went directly. I booked a flight to India. I went to Pune. I spent time there. And from then on, it's been for me a total and absolute adventure and immersion into personal growth. And it all started with Osho. So, <laughs> yeah. wow. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we're actually here today to talk about inner leadership and you've recently created a program on inner leadership and why did you create this program and if you could just tell us a bit about it that'd be fantastic yeah you know i um first uh first i was finding um uh, this calling to want to do work around leadership and it came very strong as I had different people assisting me throughout different workshops. And um, I sort of naturally created this leadership program, which grew and grew. But what became very evident in anything when you want to start to learn to lead is that we need to, of course, learn how to self-lead. And it starts with us. And I recognized and I can see it today when you look at leadership today, and especially in in the world of politics or corporations, uh, which are, you know, in many ways uh, holding the biggest seats and the biggest influencers in the world today, that this aspect of inner leadership is um, 
a quality, let's say, that I personally feel can be um, can really transform the way we relate with people and also with ourselves. So that inner leader, that part inside of us um, hasn't maybe necessarily been nurtured in what we've come to see as leadership over the last, you know, whatever centuries <laughs> and decades. And I certainly see as a change on the horizon, people starting to reflect on this, you know, you know, this top heavy leadership, the authoritarian leadership, the, this is slowly shifting and people are recognizing that that's uh, not an environment that they necessarily want to work in, you know, although it still exists today. You know? Sorry, go ahead. You were gonna. Were you gonna... <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And you know what really touched me when I read about the program is that I didn't realize that being an inner leader is also about how you live your life. You know, it's about how I am in my home. You know, it's about you know how I am when I go into the world, and it can also be about how I am. You know, in a situation where I might be in a group of others um, at work or in a committee, maybe that I'm volunteering. But I'd love to know more about how it would change someone like, what can you expect to learn from this course and, and bring into your life? You know, what can we expect to, if attending the course, what would someone walk away with? Hmm. Well, you know, when we when we start to address the inner leader, we are turning our uh, attention towards self mm -hmm. and moving maybe away from comparing ourselves to others and orientating ourselves to others and, and orientating inward. And in many ways, our inner leader is connected to our inner guidance. And when we, are, we start to connect with that voice, and many of us know that voice, and some people call it gut feeling, some people call it intuition, some people call it guidance, um, it helps us to make decisions, conscientious decisions that are in uh, alignment with um, supporting us and in, in essence, wanting the best for us, making decisions that might be how you take care of your body how you attend to yourself, your self-care, um, if it feels right to speak up, you know, and how you might address a situation or a circumstance. And also what I have discovered in meeting this inner leader, I, I experienced, even though <laughs> I grew up in this wonderful conscious community, it didn't take away the first seven years of a very traumatic upbringing. And uh, I had to work through that years later to recognize that I had a very um, unworthy part inside of me and part that was too scared to really come out and really speak up and really show up and really be present, fully present with people because of fear, because of you're not feeling good enough. And what I come to recognize when I started to meet this inner leader is I was meeting the qualities that it had to offer, which was my inner power, empowerment. And that was a massive step for me. That was, uh, gave me so much capabilities to be in, uh, in the room with people and holding space and to speak up and not to be scared of speaking up and to take, you know, to have courage, to take risks. So this meeting place of the inner leader is has a lot of richness in it because it gave me permission to be myself and in my humanness and all my mistakes and follies and so on which is in many ways liberating because i went i gave me also an okayness with who i am um I, you know that's why i say sometimes to people regardless if you want to go out and lead a bunch of people or not meeting that part in yourself is uh for me transformative because it allowed me to be fully in my um empowerment fully in my who i am no compromising and you know ducking my head playing small yeah, and holding myself back Oh, so this is about finding a connection with that part of you, that inner voice, finding a connection with who you really are. 
And when you find a connection with that piece, then you have this opportunity to live your life the way that you want to live it. And then, and when you have that confidence to listen to that inner voice, then you have a greater capacity to lead others with authenticity. Is that? Yeah. Yes. And also, so I, I wrote, um, I wrote somewhere, um, how you lead others greatly says how you lead yourself. For example, your ability to be patient with yourself, of course, is going to influence how you are patient with others. And patience is a very big one because everybody knows that one around patience. Are you really patient with yourself? So how can I really be patient with another if I can't give that to myself? Yeah. And also same, same, let's say with compassion. Can I be really compassionate with myself? Can I be really gentle with myself? Can I be kind to myself? So everything we turn inward and we, and we start with ourselves and say, aha, can I do that? Can I offer the same thing to myself? Can I support myself as much as I want to go out there and support others? Yeah. And that, so how you lead others greatly shows how you lead yourself. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I read somewhere um, that in this program also that you learn to stand in the wholeness of who you are. And I think that has a lot to do with what you were just saying. And that when you can stand in the wholeness of who you are, and then you see that reflection, it's almost like a mirror where what you're putting out into the world then that kind of reflects back to you. Yes, yeah. as well as if I'm going to enter a room, whether it's a, a function, a social setting, or a seminar, mm -hmm. if we're able to give ourselves permission to stand in the wholeness of who we are, we're giving permission to the parts that we are challenged with within ourselves, you know, our, you know, shadow side, you could say, our you know, parts that we maybe put down or uh, feel um, insecure about, or, you know, prefer to hide or shameful about. And standing in the wholeness of who we are says, yes, I'm also this. Yeah, I'm also give myself permission to recognize that I am human. I have, you know, places where I make mistakes and I screw up and I'm, you know, I don't always say the right thing and it's okay, you know, and I sometimes, you know, wish I could have done something differently and it's also okay. So when we are able to give permission to all aspects of ourselves, it allows us to embrace that part, accept that part, and even, you know, stand in it. So the wholeness of who we are is not saying, um, I'm just the light, you know, I'm just this amazing da da da, and, and ignoring that other part. Because if I'm going to be there, let's say for another, and something shows up for them, and their shadow shows up, or their insecurities are unworthy, or whatever it might be, anger, or frustration, or burnout, you know, in order for me to really be able to support them fully, I have to also be able to embrace that part in myself, acknowledge that part of myself. And um, for me, that is the whole leader. Yeah, that is a holistic leader, you can call it. Um, and I wrote basically the wholeness of who we are. Every part of it has its place, yeah. Ah, I really appreciate what you just said. Because when I was thinking about wholeness, I was just thinking about all these great things, <laughs> you know, all the good things. Not that the shadow side is bad because it isn't, right? It's just part of who we are. But when I was imagining it, I was thinking only of the positive. And the way that you describe it is so much better because it's actually exactly who we, it's exactly who I am, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and it's perfect because it's what we see in the world today, right? It's reflected yeah. out and if we yeah. denied it. It would be, for me, inauthentic and that wouldn't be an authentic way to lead ourselves or others. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I just love it. So this must have some relationship then to how we learn how our negative self-beliefs hold us back. Can you talk a little bit about that? Like when we, well, I have, um, I had created this wonderful 
course and you know about it and it's a lovely course around self-worthiness and what came out of that was um, a term that I often use which is um, to identify that super ego or that inner critic or inner judge and I gave it a name because it, we all have it and it's something that sadly I can't find the remote button to turn it off but it exists <laughs> yet so I started giving it a name you know I gave it actually the name Bruno and um, but I realized uh, actually what I was aware of was uh, that there's too many people out there called Bruno so it wouldn't be fair so I call it Brutus for now yeah <laughs> so let's call it that that Brutus that has a voice in the head that says Rupta, you need to be more, you need to do more, you need to, you know, it's pushing and it's pushing and it's pushing, yeah. And it can get very unhealthy and it can be very criticizing and it can put you down and it can say, oh, you want to go stand over there? Who are you to go stand over there? It can say, yeah, you don't have what it takes. You're not good enough. And it becomes this negative narrative that we have, you know, it's like a barrier of negative belief that, and it holds us back from really wanting to take a step forward or to grow in something because, you know, of this old way of maybe it could have birthed from childhood. Somebody said something negative to you and we carry that conditioning in our head and on and on it goes. It grows into this humongous thing and voice in your head. So, yeah, I address it in this self-leadership course because it is one of those things that prevent people from really trusting that they have what it takes or that they have something to offer from believing in themselves. And that's such a big step. That's another step that we get when we start to meet that inner leader within. So we start to believe in ourselves again, and that changes the game big time. Because now I've given myself not only permission to stand in my power and permission to hold my voice, but also believing that I can is a big movement that shifted inside of me and I'm very aware of Brutus he still hangs around my head and he still you know bangs pots and pans in my head every now and then and I'm aware of him you know and I but I don't let him run my life you know? it's my my inner leader my inner coach is aware of it and can now guide me mm -hmm. and when you have that trust in yourself, then it seems like it would be a whole new, almost a whole new way to see life because you trust yourself. And really all we have is really ourselves, right? Because who I am reflects how I see the whole world and everything I experience. You know, Jackie, I wish that when I was in high school, this course was available, that they were teaching us how to listen to our inner leader, our inner coach, our inner guidance, our intuition, our gut feeling, to really land in that part of ourselves, to trust that part of ourselves. It would change the way I see the world for sure. And the way I connect with the world and my relationship to the world and my relationship to others. And of course, my relationship to myself. I really, I feel like it, would have been such a big difference quality of how to be in the world and instead of course we are following a very old traditional conventional way of education understandable that's what's out there i'm not going to challenge it and i'm not going <laughs> to protest against it i just feel like there's this being included as a young insecure teenager and many of them are today and we all probably have experienced that in our life would have been uh, a wonderful support and insight and guidance for us all. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I also see that in myself throughout my life, looking for all of my guidance externally with my, you know, with parents or with teachers, with friends, with peers, just people maybe who aren't my friends, but I look up to them. But when am I ever looking within myself and saying, well, what, what might, what might you have to say, Jackie? <laughs> you know, how often that, that poor little Jackie just got ignored, buried underneath all those negative self-beliefs. and <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? well said. So that's Judgment. exactly what we'll be exploring in the, uh, in the online course. Exactly that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and you know, um, 
I think what something you said earlier really resonated with me because the first time I really ever saw myself for who I was, was in Path of Love. For the very first time, I was in my 30s when I did Path of Love. And I remember realizing who I was. And that just, it changed everything. Um, and that's something that we are also talking about here in this program, being able to see who you are. And so I'm wondering, how does it work online? Does it work online? How do you bring that through, that essence of the work? You know, it's been a, an interesting dance for us in Path of Love, where we've moved from the physical into the virtual. Mm -hmm. And But what has become evident over the last, I think it's been 18 months or so, that the online courses that we've been holding as what does transfer and transpire and it's unbelievable it really when we even whether it's 20 30 40 faces popping up on the screen you know um that human connection can surpass you know <laughs> you know any screen it's unbelievable and people feel you know feel the connection it's unbelievable really and the community that comes out of that you know that the solidarity through just sitting in front of the screen and sharing and opening up yes it's not in the physical space yes we're not in you know physical form able to reach out to physically touch somebody but we can still very much feel that contact and that depth and then i what i have come to see and recognize is that it does work you know people are blown away uh, heart blown head blown and that uh, there is not just a transfer of information, but a transformation that can actually happen even online. And, you know, we, we hold the space for people in the same way we would hold the space in, in a physical course. And people show up with everything, whether it's with tears, joy, laughter, frustration, everything is welcome here, as we say in Path of Love. And it really it really works in this virtual space and the support is really felt in the virtual space so much so that i get people writing after going wow i want more can we meet again can our small group come together again can we keep it going on a regular basis and by the way that does exist now i have many different courses that i've done where people continue to meet because of what's happening collectively with the covid and you know the isolation that people have been experiencing people have continued meeting and connecting online so what we also get out of it is community we get this sort of stronghold and support system that is there and and just a, a fingertip away so it's it's wonderful really it's, it really works <laughs> that's wonderful Ripa, thank you so much i was just looking at the course and there's this quote here that really resonated with me and also with this conversation and it's an osho quote and he says drop the idea of becoming someone because you are already a masterpiece you cannot be improved you have only to come to it to know it to realize it osho mm. <laughs> And that really, that says in many ways, the essence of what we're doing, not just in this uh, self-leadership course, but also in Path of Love, coming back to ourselves, remembering the truth of who we are. You know, we're not giving, no teacher is giving us anything new. You know, we're realizing what we already have, those inner qualities, they're all there. They're all accessible, reachable, available. Uh, it's just finding those obstacles and getting them out of the way <laughs> and meeting that place in ourselves but it's all very doable yes yes getting out of our own way i yes. think i spend most of my life getting out of my own way <laughs> 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 then once i'm out of my way i'm like oh that's what that was <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you so much Rupta for spending the time today to talk about this it's such an important topic it's really at the root of who we all are I think mm, thank you Jackie thank you and for anyone who's interested to learn more um, Rupta does have a course coming up on this self-leadership 
leading from a place of empowerment. And it'll be uh, the first weekend in October. So you can go to the Path Retreats website to learn a bit more about that. And of course, if you have any questions, you can also please write, write to us. And we would be really happy to answer them and to connect with anyone. So thanks so much, wow. all of you, <laughs> for listening. And thank you so much, Rupta, for being here. Yes, so thank you. It's a pleasure, as, well, as always, <laughs> talking And hope you. to see some of you there. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> thank you so much.